We'll continue on with our post-race press conference. We are now joined by our race-winning crew chief, Todd Gordon, and vice chairman of Team Penske, Walter Zarnicki. Todd, Joe Gibbs Racing, the heavy favorites tonight. Tell us about your team's preparation this weekend and ability to find victory lane at the end of the night. Yeah, um, I felt like uh, I felt like when we came in the weekend, and, and this is one of those racetracks that once a driver and a team figures out what they need to be successful, uh, you uh, you can focus on that. And in practice, we uh, we weren't necessarily the fastest car here, but we had pretty good speed and uh, we had the right balance, and that's a. Uh, something that we build off of and felt like a happy hour we really hit on something and we worked on that and obviously qualified we didn't qualify in a pole but we had a flat tire in the first session so i thought that was a really good uh really good recovery for the guys to have a right rear going down and figure out how to get through the round to get another tire on and um fifth place qualifying effort was a was an accomplishment for the team and, and what they did so uh pretty proud of everybody there and pretty proud of the execution tonight joey uh Joey definitely had long run speed, and, and those couple long runs that we had it went, went went almost 100 laps. We uh, were really strong in the last half of it. And Walt, this is the team's second win in three races. Talk about the team's performance here lately and the win tonight. Well, I think the uh, the, the, the resurgence, I'll call it, uh, after our, the first third of the season, which was pretty good after Daytona, of course, went into a little bit of a dry spell. But I think from a Team Penske perspective, things started to come together at Kentucky. And I think that for those last, what, six races now, we've been in contention. We've won two of them and had the real opportunity to uh, to win those races as well. So uh, I want to congratulate uh, Todd and Joey, of course, uh, uh, for what they did tonight. Uh, talking to Todd before the race, I told him uh, upstairs a minute ago that he exuded a confidence and a, and a sense of preparation that we were going to be able to compete and compete effectively. Uh, they executed and, uh, and demonstrated it uh, beautifully. We'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Please state your name and affiliation. We'll start up here with Bob and then go behind Bob. I'm Bob Hockris, ESPN. Um, Todd, was that the best race Joey's ever driven? Wow. Um, he, he performed flawlessly. Uh, best race he's ever driven. I don't know. Daytona was pretty phenomenal. Uh, but but it, it was a typical Joey Logano performance. Uh, you know, it's, I said it in victory lane, it's... You know, it's, I'll put the analogy to basketball, but there's a there's only certain a handful of guys that want to have the ball in their hands with three seconds left on the shot clock, and uh, Joey's that guy. He uh, when when it comes down down to the time to make it happen, he elevates, doesn't make mistakes. I think Kevin Kevin challenged us uh, pretty formidably, and uh, Joey never folded in it, never made a mistake, and and did what he had to do and executed, and that's a. Uh, it's it's a Joey Logano performance. I, I don't know that I call it his best performance. He's had a bunch of really good ones. Todd, excuse me. I just want one word came to mind, Bob. Too in the watching those last fifty laps, uh, the word was poise. He just didn't lose his composure. Mm -hmm. And uh, using Todd's analogy, Todd handed him the football and he found the holes. Mm -hmm. Deb Williams, RacingToday.com, and. This could kind of continue with what you're talking about, the poison all, but Team Penske has now won three of the last five night races here at Bristol. What do you attribute that to, and do you think it is because of the poise that you, that Brad and Joy both exhibit in the night race? I would say, uh, I would say that we've got, you know, this, this place to be successful here takes the complete package, and there's, there's several opportunities to make mistakes. And and if you you execute, you can be successful. But uh, our, both of our drivers challenge each other. I think uh, when you look at our setups, we uh, we we build off each other. I think you know to the point of it is Team Penske. Uh, we share a lot of information between the two teams. And and when you've got two teams attacking it, and two drivers like we've got, I mean, Brad and Joey are both phenomenal race car drivers, and they and they challenge each other, but constructively. Uh, I think that's a that's a key to our success. And, and here, it's a, it's it's something we, we we all work together for a common goal. And uh, you know, it, last year we were one two, and and tonight we were one two for a while. Uh, didn't didn't end up being that way, but uh, we all work together. We understand what it takes to be successful here, and we work on it. You know, Deb, uh, I think your point as well. Uh, there's a great heritage in Team Penske for this place, beginning with Rusty Wallace. And Rusty had some great great runs here. 
He had some runs where he should have won, and things occurred at the end, but be that as it may. So I think Bristol has always been right at the top of our hierarchy of, of important races if we look to the schedule. Uh, to me personally, uh, winning the Daytona 500 is huge. That's number one. But the Bristol night race is right there with it, in my view. So, and I think the whole organization feels that way. But I think it really began with Rusty and the way Rusty would focus on this, uh, on this event when he was driving. We'll go up to the press box for a question. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. For Todd, um, you know how critical it is in the pits. We saw a lot of loose tires tonight. And how much has this lug nut um, rule that they instituted of late had to do with the, the rash of uh, lug nut incidents that we have seen in the pits with the loose tires and everything? I mean, it cost a lot of people tonight. Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, it, it, may, be a, it may be a factor in it. Um, the pla this place itself is rough on wheels. It's just a, it's a place that you know you've got so much lateral load in the car, and and there's so much drive and brake, and you know it's 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 500 laps of a lot of load on the on a, on a, especially the rear wheels. Um, so you you'll see a if you're going to have a weakness, if you're borderline on on having wheels torqued every week, uh, it's going to show up here. You've got a lot of gear in the car, and you got a lot of acceleration, a lot of deceleration, a lot of lateral load. It's a it's a really, really high lateral load place with all the banking that's in the corners and running right up there at the in the grip strip uh, up there at the wall. So, um, I, I, I'm sure that you know the, the the lug nut rule has a slight impact on that, but I, I'd say there's a bigger impact of this racetrack's just rough on rear wheels. Any final questions for Walt or Todd? We'll go on the back to Mike and then up to Jim Utter. This is for Todd, Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. Um, we saw some cars that were quick on short run and fell off on a long run. Other people were slow on a short run but picked up speed on the long run. You've all theoretically got the same tire compound. How can you explain that some people run faster at the beginning and others run faster at the end? Yeah, there's, there's, several, there's several factors that play into that. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's air pressure in tires. It's camber settings in tires as to what you're – you know what you're doing to make a short run speed versus long run speed. I think uh, you know how your how your splitter is off the racetrack. Um, when, when you when you see tires build up through a you know you, you look at these cars and the rotors are glowing in them, and glowing rotors are 13, 1400 degrees. So there's a big heat source in the middle of it, which builds the tire pressure up a bunch. Um, as the tires build up, then this, the the whole ride height of the car comes up, and if the splitter's on the racetrack, it, it makes them tight. So there may be guys that. That early in the run, they're on a splitter, and they're just they just can't turn the way they need to to make speed. But as as the tires build up from the rotor heat and just from the from the grip heat, that that splitter comes up and gets to a happy spot, and then their car works. So um, you'll see that, and that's that's stuff that we all work on as race teams as to how we feel the race strategy will play out to long runs and short runs of whether you want to be good in a short run or good in a long run. I felt like the Gibbs cars were a little quicker than we were firing off, but about 50 laps in, we could run them back down. Um, and, and we just, I feel like there's several pieces there we had different philosophies on. We'll go to Jim for our final question. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. Uh, for both of you, um, we've often all talked about how sometimes people forget that Joey is just 25 because he's actually had so many years in the Cup Series. But in the progress that uh, he's made in the relatively short time that he's been at Team Penske and the work that you two have done together, <laughs> Uh, is it hard to get a grasp on what his potential may be? It's exciting to get a grasp on what his potential could be. Uh, he is 25 years old, but he's he's much mature beyond that that age. Uh, you know, got put in a cup car at 18, so he's he's 25 years old with seven years experience of understanding what it takes to be successful, and uh, made the chase all three. You know, now all three years at, at Penske, um, and and executing. I think you saw that in his nationwide performances before he got here, that, that he was a closer. And uh, um, he's so mature beyond his years uh, at 25. I, I just i am thrilled at what the future brings for us. I think that, uh, I think that Joey has a great sense of self. Uh, he does not have an inflated, in my view, doesn't have this inflated image of himself. He knows what his limitations are. He stays within his limitations. He listens to people like Todd because he knows he has, uh, they have his welfare at heart, and he doesn't extend beyond it. Uh, I think it's interesting, uh, just an observation I shared with someone a few minutes ago, that when I listen 
to the dialogue between Todd and Joey during the race, Joey doesn't say a whole lot if you listen. He knows that he's executing. He has a great deal of confidence in, in Todd. So that's, that's a person who's got a great, as I said, a sense of self that he doesn't know better. He realizes he's part of the team, and he's not trying to extend beyond it. Having said that, he has tremendous potential. Tremendous potential. But um, right now, I think we're going to worry about Darlington, right? We're going to work on Homestead Test on yeah, Wednesday. Right. <laughs> and then we're going to worry about Darlington. All right, Walt and Todd, thank you for joining us tonight, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all.